Welcome back, y'all, to Searching for Faith. If you're new here, I'm Tracy. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. Um, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, I don't feel like I can flip through, like, all of my old journals. I could, like, show you all my old journals. Uh, but there's a lot of personal stuff in them. Uh, but this is a black journal that I got years and years and years ago that I used a mostly, I think, silver, like, gel pen in and I wrote out song lyrics that I loved, Bible verses, um, quotes from books, uh, personal poems that I wrote. Um, so these are things that I, some of it might be like slightly embarrassing, but I feel like it's like a little, it's, it's, shareable enough, I guess, like where I feel comfortable sharing this with you guys. Um, so I just thought I would share it with you. This is something I made. This was like probably like my early twenties, like college age, um, prior before I was married. So there is some like questions about being single, dating, that kind of things, running after God. Like I was definitely like, I feel like in my early twenties, especially like I was in love with God, like I was in love with Jesus, like I was running after him and praying that my desires would be fulfilled and all of those things. And I definitely, I feel like there might be a level of immaturity in here. I got this, I think, on my birthday. I, yeah, I think I got this on my birthday. It was 2001. I would have been, gosh, I think I turned 18 and 99. So I would have been like 20 years old when I got this, but I kept filling it in as I went. So this is song lyrics from a song from Jars of Clay. I still very strongly feel that the 90s were the golden age of Christian music, where Christian music was legitimately good. So if you, for feeling me, <laughs> let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, so this is just the lyrics from Much Afraid. So empty again, sunken down so far, so scared to fall, might not get up again. So I lay at your feet all my brokenness, I carry all my burdens to you. All of these things held up in vain, no reason or rhyme, just the scars that remain. Of all of these things, I'm so much afraid, scared out of my mind by the demons I've made. Sweet Jesus, you never let me go. And that's from the song Much Afraid by Jars of Clay. If you've never heard Jars of Clay, oh my God, just go find them, Spotify, whatever, whatever services you use and go listen. So I have another Jars of Clay lyric here. And I said, I often feel this way. All said and done, I stand alone amongst remains of a life I should not own. It takes all I am to believe in the mercy that covers me. Did you really have to die for me? All I am for all you are, because what I need and what I believe are worlds apart. And I definitely feel like this is probably like relevant now too. Like this idea of why God chooses us, why humanity is so important. And then this struggle now to regain my faith in God because what I need and what I believe are worlds apart. Like trying to like meld those two things, you know? So I think this, this, this definitely speaks to me. So this is 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And I feel like I always like kind of claimed this verse from Timothy and kind of always felt, I guess, kindred somewhat with Timothy, but, uh, or with the words in the book, you know, because I was always a, like, I'm very introverted and I was always like a deathly shy child. And I always felt like this verse was like a way, kind of like a encouraging myself to believe that I could do good things. I could do amazing things because Christ is in me and because he is giving me the strength to be myself and get out there and, and, and do things. I still feel like this is, this is a powerful verse, especially if you're struggling with 
you know, Bible study with focus, with finding, you know, time for God, that this reminds us of who, who we are, that we were given a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and of self-discipline. So, uh, powerful. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This is powerful to me now too. By the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. All right, so these are verses. This is uh, from, I don't know which Jennifer Knapp song it is, but it says, Oh, how I would have despaired if you had not come found me there. I can lean against your throne and find my peace. He is my light and my salvation. Whom have I to fear? And then I have this. Okay, so I took part in, I feel like I need to do a video about this at some point, but I took part in a spiritual retreat. I guess is the right way to put it when I was young. And I used to, there were multiple times that I served on the worship band as a singer at these retreats. But one time, I can't remember if it was my first one, like where I was attending or if when I was working, that somebody sang these words. I still don't know who you are. I don't know who wrote them, but I memorized the song, wrote it in my journal, and I still know these words to heart. So I think I'm going to read it to you and then sing it to you because that's how moving it is to me personally. So, oh, father, speak to me, make these blind eyes see the error of my ways. Open up my heart, tear my world apart, remove all shades of gray. And if I start to stray, start to slip away, wrap your loving arms around me and I will know your grace as I seek your face. Oh, father, speak to me. So I'm going to sing it now. Please forgive me. I used to be a singer and I don't sing anymore. Like I only sing to myself. So uh, <laughs> no judgment, please. Oh, Father, speak to me. Make this blind eye see the error of my ways. Open up my heart, tear my world apart. Remove all shades of gray. And if I start to stray, start to slip away, wrap your loving arms around me. And I will know your grace as I seek your face. Oh, Father, speak to me. So I heard somebody sing this at that retreat. It like spoke to me and these words are just like ingrained in my heart. Like I journaled them, I held on to them and I have continued to sing this song like as part of just like my worship sometimes, um, like my personal worship to God. So like I said, I don't know who you were. I don't know if you'll ever see this, but thank you for writing these words. Thank you for singing this song at that retreat and for giving me this amazing blessing that I've held on to for 20 plus years, probably. Cause I feel like I went on that tra retreat when I was like 15. So yeah, like closer to 30 years. Cause that's how old I am. Yeah, 25, 35. Yeah, thank you, whoever you are. This is something that I wrote myself. These are two poems that I both wrote. This first one is, my thoughts pull me away. I am lost in them. I wonder about me. I wonder about you. Who am I? I am no one, no one except in you. You made me, you know my thoughts. You fill me, I am a child of God. So that's one poem I wrote. And then there's this one, new situations coming over me, new people and places, what do they think of me? My life around me changes. I feel so confused. Do I turn left or right? Lord, you are my comfort. My strength comes from you. I need you in my life. I need your light to guide me through. Tough times are ahead of me. I can see them so clear. When I fall, will you pick me up? And no, I'm not good at writing music, so I never put these to, to um, these lyrics or poems that I wrote. I never put them to music. And this is another poem I wrote. I'm scared out of my mind of everything. Lord, you know me so well. Every thought is yours. I want your will. 
I know I must accept it. I am scared of myself, of my life, of the life you have for me. Your will will be done in me. That is all I say. I want so much, but say nothing. I am afraid of what I want. Lord, make our wants the same. Whatever it is, whatever you want, I will not be afraid. And I feel like this still is relevant in my life today. I wrote this when I was like 20 years old. And 20 years later, I feel like it's still how I feel sometimes, you know? But it's very reminiscent of a scared young person not knowing what they want or what they should do in life. So here are some of my favorite verses at this time of my life that I like to read during times of struggle. So the first one is 2 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Oh, wait. Sorry. 2 Corinthians 12, 9a. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And then 2 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 is dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. 1 Thessalonians 5, 28, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. And then 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safety to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, these are not another two poems that I wrote. Um, this first one is, Lord, I have gotten caught up, taken over by my flesh once again. I am dead. Revive me again. Renew my spirit once again. Flood into my body daily. I want to drown in your spirit. And then this one was more about like a boy that I had a crush on that I thought liked me back and everybody thought we were supposed to be together, but I didn't know if like I liked him because everybody wanted me to like him or if I liked him because I actually liked him. And I was like, is this God or is this like me? It's not the man I'm married to. Um, but this was just like, you know, those confusing times when you have lots of friends. Sometimes you have guy friends. You think you like them. You don't know if you like them. It's just confusing. So confusion, words, falsehoods behind you, all around you. What do you do? Where do you go? Was it you? Was it him? Was it anything or nothing? It started. It wasn't you. It was them. Only them in the beginning. Then it was him. Then it was you. Then it became no one. Mixed feelings, confusions. Will it end or will it only begin? So basically just this like the turmoil inside, which at the time felt like a very huge, like very important part of, of, of what something that I was going through. It was like a group of people that wanted me to be with a certain person. And I didn't know if I liked him because of me or because of my friends pushing me into liking him. And, uh, and I didn't know if he legitimately liked me back. And it was just like this very confusing time. So it was like, that's what that poem was about. Here's another poem that I wrote. I come to you, O Lord, empty hands, yet a willing heart. What have I done? What have I to fear? The power and authority of a mighty God surrounding me, yet the appearance of a timid little girl. I'm afraid, but does it really matter? I come to you on my knees, a broken child. You lift me up, strengthening my soul. Another battle ahead will I fail. Are you disappointed? Have you shed tears for me? You gave me your son. He shed blood. He rose. He fought the battle for me alongside me. I shall not, cannot fail. Your son, your spirit, you are always with me, alongside me, strengthening me, loving me. And this is actually a song I wrote, but I can't remember the tune. I think, okay, well, let me read it first. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. And God, whose word I praise, I will trust in you. I will not be afraid. I will trust in you. I will be strong. You are my God. What can they do to me? I will trust in you. I think it's, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, I will trust in you. I will not be afraid. I will trust in you. I will be strong. You are my God. What can they do to me? I will trust in you. I think that's the like song. I said I don't really write music, but I remember, yeah, it was like the things that never leave your brain. 
yeah i yeah i put that's the one i put music to y'all all right huge jan austin fan so uh, there are some book quotes in this journal as well so this is the declaration from edmund in mansfield park i've loved you my entire life and i can't remember if this is from the book or from the movie this might be from the movie that came out in either the nine, late 90s or early 2000s. I have loved you my entire life. No fanny. As a man loves a woman. As a hero loves a heroine. As I have never loved anyone in my entire life. I was so anxious to do what was right. I forgot to do what is right. But if you choose me after all my blundering and blindness, it would be a happiness that no description could ever reach. I feel like those are like word for word what he says in the movie from that time. So I'm not sure if that's from the actual book. These are some of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis. Well, here's a Jane Austen quote. All badinage apart, I don't think you or I very likely to lose our gaiety or our peace of mind for any male creature breathing. Here's a C.S. Lewis quote. The only place outside heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. Um, this is a quote from a book by Evelyn Bentz that I found. It's called Growing, and it was just like, it spoke to me during my pre, like preteen, early teen years. I'm actually planning, my niece is going to be turning 13 soon, and I'm actually planning on giving this book to her in hopes that it can be an inspiration and, 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 and something that, that helps her get through these difficult years. Last week I was his girlfriend, always and forever. Like an army, he invaded my mind, my heart. I belonged to him, not to my parents, nor even to myself. How can something that felt so good change so quickly, like a warm pull into ice? When I thought out, will I, should I trust a boy again with so much of whom I am? I want to love, I want to be loved. Maybe as I grow older, falling in love will become easier. When I climb in bed at night and turn the lights out on the world, it's just you and me, God. The rest of the people who tell me who I am may walk through my dreams, but really they're all on the other side of the closed door of my eyelids. Now in the dark, I can tell you who I most want to be, your special daughter, one you pick up in your arms and let safely sleep. Like I said, this is a book called Growing by Evelyn Bentz. If I can find the book, I will link it. It was a book that I randomly found on my parents' bookshelves when I was like 12. And I still have it. I'll put like a picture of my copy right here. But it's a book that really helped me get through, like I said, my 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 teen and preteen years, especially. All right, this is not a Christian song, but this is a lyric from Jewel. Wouldn't it be nice if I could melt myself like ice or outrun my skin and just be pure wind? Oh, fragile flame, sometimes I feel the same. Uh, definitely, I always loved, uh, I loved, loved me some Jewel in the 90s. All right, so these were my wants or desires when I was 20 years old. I want to be passionate about God, not loud, but a true child of God who's intimate with him. I want to know what true intimacy is. And that was about my relationship with God. Um, this is about relationship with a man. I want a companion, someone who plans on serving God, someone who will love me and who thinks I am beautiful, someone who loves God with all that is within him, someone who will walk beside me and hold my hand, who will lift me up spiritually, pray and with me, and who will strive to do what is right, do God's will and be strong, even when he doesn't know how to. Someone who will make me feel comfortable no matter where we are or who, or who we are with. Someone who longs to be near me and will always protect me. I want a family. I want to be settled. I want traditions. I want to raise godly children. And unfortunately, that want did not come to fruition because we could not have children. I want contentment, happiness, love, fulfillment, and total joy in my life. I want to walk under the sunshine of Jesus Christ all the days of my life. All right, this is another quote from Jane Austen, Emma Woodhouse and Emma. Now I need not call you Mr. Knightley. I may call you my Mr. Knightley. I feel like that is from the movie Emma, but uh, <laughs> that line always cringe, right? Okay, so I wrote this poem, love, question marks. I long to be in love. I always had this fairy tale romance picked out for myself, but reality isn't like a fairy tale. It can't be. It's not possible. How will I know? Do I believe in love at first sight? Isn't it much more than just feelings? But I long for feelings. Am I just a silly girl or am I or a woman who knows what she wants? Will I ever know? Will my questions ever be answered? Does he, God, understand? All right, this is a, one of my favorite quotes from Elizabeth Elliot called, and it's her clogged with wishes quote. I was wishing that my wish, now this is, this is a mouthful, so yeah, bear with me. 
I was wishing that my wishes were what God wished. And if my wishes were not what God wished, I wished that I could wish that my wishes would go away, but the wishes were still there. <laughs> and I still feel this way. I feel like those words are still relevant today. All right, this is Piece of Glass from Caveman's Call. If you've never heard of Caveman's Call, once again, just check out all the 90s. Just like, I think I have a 90s playlist a Christian 90s playlist so uh and it's kind of like a mix of like late 80s excuse me it's like a mix from like late 80s to early 2000s so I will definitely link it below go check out 90s Christian okay but this is from the song piece of glass I can't believe that I did it again wake me up from this nightmare because this monster's wasting me away and taking my days every day and I just like a preface this is a trigger warning about eating disorders. Uh, I was bulimic when I was younger for a few years, like my senior year of high school through like my maybe sophomore year of college was when I really struggled with it. This song speaks to me as somebody who struggled with an eating disorder. So um, definitely a trigger warning about that. Uh, I can't believe that I did it again. Wake me up from this nightmare because this monster's wasting me away and taking my days. Every day I live a bit less, one night leads to another. Even if I went back, would they recognize me, criticize me? Who are you that lies when you stare at my face? Telling me that I'm just a trace of the person I once was because I just can't tell. If you're telling the truth or a lie, on you I just can't rely. And after all, you're just a piece of glass. Still I control this nightmare when I call it answers, but I can't tell it when to come or when to stay. Who are you that lies when you stare at my face, telling me that I'm just a trace of the person I once was? Because I can't just, because I just can't tell if you're telling me the truth or a lie. On you, I just can't rely. And after all, you're just a piece of glass. Don't talk, listen, hold me tighter. Stay with me just for a while until the sun shines. Just stay with me, just give me one more day. Who are you that lies when you stare at my face, telling me that I'm just a trace of the person I once was? Because we're not the same. You're just a picture of me. You're gone as soon as I leave. You're li you've are you lived my life for me and you're no more than a piece of glass. You're no more than just a piece of glass. So anybody who struggles with body uh, dysmorphia or body um, issues or anything like that, whether you've had an eating disorder or not, if you've had issues where just the your, your, your reflection in a mirror is triggering to you any of that like if you know how that feels this song is a very beautiful honest real song it really can uh really speaks to you on that level so highly recommend checking it out uh this is another quote from c.s lewis that i love i think i probably shared this in my either what to do when you feel doubt or my um returning to the christian faith after being an agnostic video um but i'll link both below just in case if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in the slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea, we are far too easily pleased. C.S. Lewis all right, this is from Bridget Jones's diary. What I am trying to say very inarticulate, inarticulately is that in fact, perhaps despite appearances, I like you very much. No, I like you very much just as you are. This is from a book called, and I will put a picture of it right here. I think I still have it. The Princess and the Kiss. My first kiss was with my husband. And if you watched my video on, uh, like my dating story you'll kind of understand the context a little bit but this, there was this book about like basically it's a it's a very purity culture book and i now have mixed feelings about how much i approve of it or don't because i feel like it could also be uh, a dangerous toxic message but this quote is from that book so this is like the end of the book when the farmer finds the princess and lets her know he's saved his kiss for her. I've worked in your father's fields for many years. I prayed and watched and waited for one who would be my wife, yet found no one. Then one day I saw you walking on the palace lawn. Your beauty was marvelous and your purity sparkled like diamonds. I have little to offer you, princess. I have no gold. I have no means to travel the earth. I'm not as strong as many, but I do have one very special gift I can give to you. 
This is my first kiss, princess. God gave this gift to me on the day I was born. My parents kept it for me until I became a man. I've saved it all my life for you. Would you be my wife? And that's from the book, The Princess and the Kiss by Jenny Bishop. Like I said, I have mixed feelings about this now, but at the time when I wrote this, it was a very beautiful thing to me. All right, so this, once again, trigger warning on eating disorders, but I wrote this in my diary or my journal on January 20th, 1997. So I was like 15, 16 years old at the time. And this is what I wrote in my journal. Why does my whole life have to revolve around guys and wanting to be thin? Just leave it at that. All right, this is from, there was this, I feel like early 2000s, Snow White movie and she there's this quote that she says in the movie actually has I'm trying to remember the girl's name but the girl that was um Lana Lang in the Smallville series um she was Snow White in this movie if I can like find like the picture of like the movie I'll put it right here but the quote is what does that mean because basically the prince comes up on her and is like you're so beautiful and she's like seriously she's like what does that mean beautiful I hate that beautiful do a person's outsides have anything to do with them being kind or considerate or careful towards others? No. Or gentle or generous? No. Or loving or giving or just or wise? Like, she's, like, fed up with people telling her she's beautiful. She's just like, that means nothing. Don't tell me I'm beautiful. Get to know me and tell me what you think of me then. This is uh, 1 Peter 3, 3 through 6. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, just as such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. For this is the way the holy women of the past put their hope in God used to... Women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. I definitely feel like this verse, I have mixed feelings about this verse now. And I definitely feel like it's pulled out of context now. Um, so I definitely want to study this more. So please do not take this as me saying that you basically need to be a traditional submissive wife and not wear nice things or jewelry or anything like I am not of that mindset or in that camp so I definitely want to do some more in-depth study on this verse but this is Paul talking to a very specific group of people about a very specific issue I have mixed feelings about it, but like I said we'll be studying that more later so this is from Psalm 116 5 through 9 the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Sorry, I keep, I feel like I keep shifting the book. All right, so this is from C.S. Lewis, and you guys have heard me share, I feel like this, this like, I know I've shared with you Puddle Glum speech, but this is like my other favorite part. This is from Prince Caspian when uh, the Pevensies are back in, in Narnia and she's seen Aslan, but nobody believes her. And so it's the middle of the night and she finds him in the wood. So this is, is that section. I think I shared this on my shorts, like with like a nature video, <laughs> if I'm going to read through it. She rushed to him. She felt her heart would burst if she lost a moment. And the next thing she knew was that she was kissing him and putting her arms so far around his neck as she could and burying her face in the beautiful, rich silkiness of his mane. Aslan, Aslan, dear Aslan, sobbed Lucy at last. The great beast rolled over on his side so that Lucy fell, half sitting and half lying between his front paws. He bent forward and just touched her nose with his tongue. His warm breath came all around her. She gazed up into the large, wise face. Welcome, child, he said. Aslan, said Lucy, you're bigger. That is because you are older, little one, answered he. Not because you are. I am not, but every year you grow, you will find me bigger. Apologetics, hidden into a <laughs> children's novel. For a, time when she was, for a time, she was so happy that she did not want to speak. But Aslan spoke. Lucy, he said. We must not lie here for long. You have work in hand, and much time has been has been lost today. Yes, wasn't it a shame, said Lucy. I saw you all right. They wouldn't believe me. They're all so... From somewhere deep inside Aslan's body, there came the faintest suggestion of a growl. 
I'm sorry, said Lucy, who understood some of his moods. I didn't mean to start slanging the others. This is another apologetic thing. Just this one statement. I'm sorry, said Lucy, who understood some of his moods. Like the intimacy and the level that she knows Aslan. The reflection of like how well we should know God. Um, I didn't mean to start slinging the others, but it wasn't my fault anyway, was it? The lion looked straight into her eyes. Oh, Aslan, said Lucy. You don't mean it was. How could I? I couldn't have left the others and come up to you alone. How could I? Don't look at me like that. Oh, well, I suppose I could. Yes, and it wouldn't have been alone. I know, not if I was with you, but what would have been the good? Aslan said nothing. You mean, said Lucy rather faintly, that it would have turned out all right somehow? But how? Please, Aslan, am I not to know? To know what would have happened, child, said Aslan. No, nobody is ever told that. Oh, dear, said Lucy. That's from Prince Caspian and C.S. Lewis. All right, this is another poem I wrote. My God, oh my Lord, how big you are, yet so close and gentle, you're inside of me. It takes all my understanding to contemplate why you, O oh Lord, would desire to live inside of me. But it is not in my understanding, it is not in my will, it is not in my strength. All I am, all I am yet to become, sorry, city noises, is in you. All right, this is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These lyrics are from a band that I went to college with called Jailbird Paul. I don't think they're still a band. If they are, or if you can still get their album, I will link them. But um, this is a lyric from one of their songs. If the picture of reality... If the picture of reality has given power to my pride, I can't relate. Why I give credit to myself when I deserve nothing. I am a child yearning for my father's word, which I need to survive. This world of pain and lies, I reject every piece of bread I see. But you forgive everything I do. I'm climbing back for you. I realize again that you are everything I am. I know nothing. You know all. You'll keep standing. I will fall. And this is another poem that I wrote. Oh Lord, once again, why do I always let go? I am weak. My emotions well up within me. I have feelings. I have thoughts. I think as I should not think. Something happens to me for which I seem to have no control over. I desire so much. I wish to be loved. I wish to be taken care of. I wish to be taken seriously. I wish to have respect. I wish to be handled gently. I wish to be touched. What are wishes? Are they anything or nothing? At the moment, any one of these wishes are met. Am I allowed to expect more? Will there ever be more? I have given you, Lord, complete control. Why is it that I keep pulling back what is not mine? I say, do with me what you will. I mean it, Lord, I do. If nothing else, I can say, do with me what you will. And I still feel like this is relevant today. <laughs> Especially the second part. Um, let's see. This is Anne Elliot from Persuasion. Once again, I don't know if this is a line from the movie I saw or if it's from directly from the book, but we're going to put it in here anyway. I'm pretty sure this is from the late 90s Persuasion. Um, and I'm trying to remember the actors in it, but once again, I will like put like little pictures, you know, which version I'm talking about. I love any. Give me, I don't care how many have already been made. Give me every. I even love the old school like theater style ones from, uh, from, um, uh, not PBS, um, Masterpiece Theater, like the original ones where they're literally just sitting around like it's theater style. Like even those, like one of my favorite Pride and Prejudices is from like the early 80s. Like I just love these movies. It would not be in the nature of any woman who truly loved. We do not forget you as soon as you forget us. We live at home alone. Our feelings prey upon us. So long as, if I may, so long as the woman you love lives and lives for you, all the privilege I claim for my own sex, and it is not a very amiable one, I need not to covet, I, knit, blah, 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 blah. I claim for my own sex, and is not a very amiable one, I need not covet it, is that of loving longest when all hope is gone. And then the quote from Captain Wimworth, when he, she's reading the letter from him, you pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Dare not say that man forgets sooner than woman, that his love has an earlier death. I have loved none but you. 
and just as I and just as I may have been weak and resentful, I have never been con constant. You alone have brought me to Bath. For you alone, I think and plan. Um, this is another Elizabeth Elliot quote. The heart set to do the Father's will need never fear defeat. Lots of Elizabeth Elliot in here. She was, Elizabeth Elliot was a real inspiration to me, especially like before I was married, like when I was like waiting to find my husband um, during those like waiting days. Um, Elizabeth Elliot was a huge inspiration to me. I don't agree with a lot of purity culture, but I love Elizabeth Elliot's books. And like I said, her words and her books really inspired it and sustained me in addition to just, you know, prayer and the Bible and journaling and everything. Until the will and the emotions, affections are brought under the authority of Christ, we have not began, we have not begun to understand, let alone to accept his lordship. The cross, as it enters the love life, will reveal the heart's truth. My heart, I knew, would be forever a lonely hunter unless settled where true joys are to be found. Basically, it's not about asking for God to fulfill the desires of your heart and give you a man. It's about putting Christ first. Putting Christ at the center of your life. And then when you do get married, putting Christ at the center of your marriage. This is from Charlotte Bronte by Jane Eyre. Also, another one of my favorite books of all time. Women are supposed to be very calm generally, but women feel just as men feel. They need exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts as much as their brothers do. They suffer from too rigid a restraint, too absolute a stagnation, precisely as men would suffer. And it is narrow-minded in their more privileged fellow creatures to say that they ought to confine themselves to making puddings and knitting stockings, to playing on the piano and embroidering bags. It is thoughtless to condemn them or laugh at them if they seek to do more or learn more than custom has pronounced necessary for their sex. This is a quote from uh, a lyric from Newsboys. Take these pieces thrown away, put them together from night and day, washed by the sun, dried by the rain, to be my father in the fatherless days. And this is from <coughs> a song lyric from Reliant K. You looked into my life and never stopped, and you're thinking all my thoughts are so simple but so beautiful, and you recite my words right back to me. Before I even speak, you let me know I am understood. You're the only one who understands completely. You're the only one who knows me, yet still loves completely. This is the song Star from Project 86. Yes, I did have a hardcore, hard rock phase <laughs> at one point. Outside looking down on me, outside the view is so much more. How could I be? Better late than dead. I am more than a noise to be stepping through, moving past collectively. All right, and this quote is also from um, Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte. I care for myself, the more solitary, the more friendless, the more I will respect myself. I will keep the law given by God, sanctioned by man. I will hold the principles received by me when I was sane, not mad, as I am now. Laws and principles are not for times when there is no temptation. They are for such moments as this, when body and soul rise in mutiny against their rigor. Stringent are they, and violate they shall be. If at my individual convenience I might break them, what would be their worth? They have a worth, so I have always believed. And if I cannot believe it now, it is because I am insane, quite insane, with my veins running fire and my heart beating faster than I can count its throbs. Preconceived opinions, foregone determinations are all I have at this hour to stand. There I plant my foot. Weezer was one of my favorite secular bands in the 90s. So this is a quote from Weezer. When everything is wrong, I, and this is like, this actually came from one of their later albums that came out like just before I got married, I feel like, like in the early 2000s. And I don't really like the album, but I did love this song. When everything is wrong, I come talk to you. You make things all right. When I'm feeling blue, you are such a blessing and I won't be messing with the one thing that brings light to all my darkness. There is no other one who can take your place. I feel happy inside when I see your face. I hope you believe me because I speak sincerely and I mean it when I tell you that I need you. You're my best friend and I love you. I'm here right beside you and I will never leave you and I feel the pain you feel when you start crying. And what was funny is that this is like obviously talking about 
uh, relationship between a man and a woman. And I think we even put this song on our wedding album back in the 2000s. It was like a thing to make like, like a mixed CD of uh, like a playlist essentially, but a mixed CD of songs that like define your relationship. But I feel like this could also be God about your relationship with God. All right, this is one of my favorite poems from Emily Dickinson. And my husband actually gave me, like, one of the first gifts he ever gave me was a, a book of poetry from Emily Dickinson. It was a quiet way he asked me if I was his. I made no answer of the tongue, but answer of the eyes. And then he bore me on before this mortal noise with swiftness as of chariots and distance as of wheels. This world did drop away as acres from the feet of one that that leaneth from balloon upon an ether street. The gulf behind was not, the continents were new, eternity was due, no seasons were to us. It was not night nor morn, but sunrise stopped upon the place and fastened it in dawn. Coming close to the end. I feel like this, what is this? Oh, I wrote this poem to my husband. This is the very last thing. Literally, we're dating. I don't even think we were engaged yet. And I wrote this poem to my husband. Um, loving you, loving you, here I dwell. All I feel, all I desire. So many thoughts and emotions, so much running. Fast through my mind, through my body, through my veins, constantly. My mind thinks of you, my heart loves you. Every thought, every word. I want to share, to know your thoughts, your desires, your fears. To know I am in your thoughts, your mind, your heart. You love me. Do I deserve your love? Am I worthy? You are my gift. A gift, a gift from God, for me, only me, all my first, saved, save for you. You care so carefully for me, for my love, for my gift. My love deeply, constantly, here I am, yours, loving you. And that is it. I have like a couple of pages left. But that was where I stopped filling in this journal. So this was, it says dreams on the front, but this was really just like, like I said, poems and lyrics and quotes from books and just all the things. So this is just like a little glimpse into what I felt comfortable sharing from journals from earlier in life. And just an example of how journaling doesn't have to be, I mean, it can be like most of my actual journals are literally just me writing prayers to God, but it can be other things too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this random little journal from my early adult years and hopefully you guys don't find it too overly cheesy but yes I just wanted to I found this one and I just I thought it would be fun to share it with you guys okay guys thank you so much for watching if you love this particular weird insight into one of my journals um then definitely hit that like button and if you would like to follow along with me on this spiritual journey we do lots of bible study content here um so uh if that sounds interesting to you at all then definitely hit that subscribe button as well and yeah okay guys i hope you guys have an amazing week and don't forget that god has not forgotten you and we're in this together and i'm here for you okay guys let me know in the comment section below uh did you keep a journal or a diary? And what kind of things did you write in it when you were younger? Um, and do you, you go back and read them sometimes? And either one, say, why did I write that? Or two, are you like, wow, that's actually still like relevant. Like I still feel that way, that way sometimes now. Let me know in the comment section. Okay, guys, can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.